Okay, welcome back to 6.6 .6 Solving Quadratics. So let's talk about how we're going to solve and how this relates to the graph. So this is number two. Algebraically and graphically solve the following equations. Where can we find a solution graphically? Use technology to help you with your graph. So that means the graphing calculator or Desmos. Okay, here, how do we solve? You guys, how do we solve? We factor. So we have x times x gives us x squared, 3 and 1, negative, positive, right? So a lot of you got x equals negative 1, x equals 3. Brilliant. That's how you solve it algebraically. To solve it graphically, remember back in 4.2. This is a good review because we're getting close to the final pretty soon. We would set each side equal to y. y equals 0 is the equation of the x-axis. Now if I want to graph this parabola, I can use my graphing calculator. I go y equals, y equals, and I can plug in x squared minus 2x minus 3, and I want to delete the rest. Oh, oops, I didn't really do that very well. Actually, let's just clear it, start over again. Okay, here we have x squared minus 2x minus 3. And we go graph. So um, some of the questions that came up was like, well, I can't see the shape. I can't see the picture of the graph because of the window. So if you go zoom standard, then that gives you that standard viewing window. Okay, but again, it's really hard to find what, what points to plot. So with, that's why we went to the table, second table. Now if your table is somehow wonky, you can go to second table setup. Second table setup. I might want to start at zero. Table, triangle table means change in table. I want it to count by one. Make sure it's set to auto because if you set it to ask, you're going to have to put in all those numbers. So we go second table, okay, 0, negative 3. So 0, negative 3, right here, 0, negative 3 is the y-intercept. Okay, we're graphing our points. 1, negative 4, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3, there's our symmetry, okay? So that means this is our vertex here. And then You'll notice that these points, why are these points specifically on my graph? 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. 3, 0, and negative 1, 0 are my x-intercepts. Notice that these are the exact same numbers that we got when we solved it. So when you solve it graphically, you're trying to find the x-intercepts. That's because anytime you have y equals 0, that's the equation. y equals 0 is the equation for the x-axis, okay? Now, you guys were exploring um, on letter C. I don't know why it's called C and not B, but that's because I don't know my alphabet, maybe. Okay, how would we solve this? What would you do to solve First thing, uh huh. You divided everything, both sides, by 5. x squared minus 11x minus 12 equals 0. So, what are your factors? x plus 1. So, what are your solutions? Negative 1. Now, you know negative 1 is going to be an intercept and 12 is going to be an intercept. So let's graph this. Now, it came up. Why can't you just graph that? Isn't that the same thing? Here, when we solved, when we set it equal to 0 and we divided by 5, that made sense. But here's the thing is x squared minus 11x minus 12 does not equal 5x squared minus 55x minus 60. You could prove that by graphing both and seeing that they're both not equal to each other. The problem that's going to come up now, okay, so let's do that. 5x squared 
Actually, I'm just going to clear it out because I don't know what's going on, why that's not typing over the top. 5x squared minus 55x minus 60. If I push graph, I'm like waiting. Huh, I don't see the graph. Oh, wait. I can't really see what this picture looks like. And that's because of the window, okay? Notice that your window right here actually gives you a clue as to how to set up the window. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go to window and I'm going to customize the window to look just like this window. So that means that my X minimum is down here. X minimum is negative 4 on this screen, on this graph. What's my x maximum? x maximum is 14. Scale just means I'm counting by 1. Scale of 1, that's fine. What's my y minimum? Well, my y-axis is here. My y minimum is down here. It's negative 200. What's my y maximum? 150. Now, the scale they're using here is 50. It doesn't really matter if you change the scale or not, and then don't worry about anything else. Now you go to the graph, you can see the shape, okay, is now showing up. The parabola is showing up. And again, you can use the table because I don't know. I don't want to just draw, you know, that'll be really a mess if I just draw a smiley face. So I go to my table of values. Here's 0, 0, negative 60. There's my y-intercept right there, and there's the y-intercept right there, negative 60. Okay, and I can plot a few points. 1, negative 110 is maybe like right here. 2, negative 150. So you kind of get the idea here. Yeah, and there's going to be symmetry as well. Oh, the vertex. Where will the vertex be? It would actually be, can you tell? 5, five is 210, negative 210. And 6 is also, oops, that's 5. 5 is negative 210. And 6 is also negative 210. So that means that it's going to dip down between those two points. So the vertex is going to be x equals 5.5. Can you tell that from the numbers that are here? Now, I did a bad thing. I just told you, don't just draw it out. Plot the points, and I just did the thing that I told you not to do. So I want you to plot the points. But can you tell that, what, how, how far is it from negative 1 to 12? How far? 13. What's half of 13? 6.5. So if you count 6.5 over, the axis of symmetry is x equals 5.5 because that's 6.5 units, you know, halfway. 6.5, 6.5. Yes, uh huh. Yes. 5 and 6. Negative 210, yes. Yes. Yes, you're right. You're right. It will it will be lower than those two points. And I don't know exactly what it is, and but I could plug that number in for x, right? If you plug in x equals 5.5, you're going to find the y value that is the vertex. Okay? Now, that question of why isn't this equal when, you know, there's just a difference of 5, well, we can see this if I go x squared minus 11x minus 12, and I graph that, oh, there's that parabola. So that's a completely different parabola than everything being multiplied by 5. You can see the difference. What do those two parabolas have in common, though? Yes, they do have the same x-intercepts, which is the reason why when we, when we solve and we divide everything by 5, we're finding the same exact x-intercepts as this, as this equation, but it's not the exact same graph. 
You see the difference, right? So, so that's why we get, the, we get the same solutions when we solve. We have the same exit intercepts. But when we graph it, we have to make sure that we always use the original equation. Okay? Questions? Any more questions on this? I think I'm going to stop this video.